Hello Gemini, welcome to your overview of 2023. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus. Please make sure you check all your placements to get a clear picture of what's going on for you at this time. As always, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate for all of you. Please take the bits that do resonate and leave the rest behind for somebody else. Now, we're doing things differently this time. Since I'm doing a full overview of an entire year, I will be looking at all 12 astrological houses in your birth chart. Now, I can't possibly know which house has which sign in it, you know what I mean? But this is just going to be a general overview of the energy. Now, if you don't know which um, house stands for which theme, I will mention the significance as I'm pulling the cards. And I am using the, the tarot of the light and the shadow we will be using the shadow deck just to see what it is that you need to leave behind and the light deck to see what it is that you need to embrace all right let's get to it now your first house is your identity it is how you show up in the world it is how people look at you uh, the the impression that you give when you enter a room for the first time all right let's see what we have for you gemini Oh, Knight of Pentacles. Interesting. Let's get your light card to see what it is that you are embracing. The Nine of Pentacles. Interesting. With the Knight of Pentacles, I feel like you're leaving slowness behind, to put it very simply. The Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck, right? He might as well not be moving. That's how slow the Knight of Pentacles is. And there's no gender in tarot. Take the energy with you. I feel like there is suddenly some kind of inspiration that may strike for you to change something about yourself. This could even just be your appearance. You know, maybe you want to dye your hair red or you want to completely change your wardrobe. Something that adds a bounce in your step is what I'm getting. And Geminis hate to be slow. And my Mercury and Venus are both in Gemini. And um, movement and progress and change is, is very important for us to, well, stay blooming, right? So I feel like something that was even probably slowing you down, you are changing that up because the Nine of Pentacles is is an accomplishment this is pre empress energy no gender in tarot this is reaching that apex and being absolutely self-reliant and self-sufficient within yourself it is also possible for some of you that you may have been a little lazy in 2022 it is possible and you're starting a new exercise regime i know that is more sixth house energy but that's what i'm getting here i'm feeling like any kind of sluggishness is being left behind in the past and you are almost polishing yourself into a brand new version of you and the nine of pentacles is very attractive energy so you are going to be shining my friend all right let's see order interesting moon in virgo i feel again now this is again very virgo energy for me i think it is sun in virgo if i'm not wrong the nine of pentacles or jupiter in virgo but either way you may have virgo heavily in your chart but virgo like you is ruled by mercury so with order showing up i feel like with the knight of pentacles whatever like i said was very slow in the past and may have been a little disorganized uh with the nine of pentacles and order you are almost getting your all your ducks lined up in a row you know what i mean and it's almost like there's there's a way forward now there's a blueprint that you want to follow for yourself for yourself you may be starting let's say a new skincare routine or a new hair care routine or um you're just taking out some more time for yourself to beautify not just your outwardly experience but uh, appearance but your your soul your inner spirit so it's almost like now when you're entering rooms in 2023 you're you're the best version of yourself the best version that you can be because you're being meticulous because you are directing your energy in the correct way all right now let's see second house second house is ruled by taurus and it is um the house that represents i'm not going to take these uh, it's the house that represents your personal income all right your own personal resources something that makes you feel stable and you're leaving behind competition you're leaving behind conflict and debate and unnecessary drama 
Hmm. Some of you may have been in a legal battle when it comes to property or your own like income, your own finances, something that is inherently yours, but somebody else was kind of fighting you for it. Ace of Wands, beautiful. Guess who's the winner? <laughs> the winner is Gemini because this is, this is an opportunity being handed to you by the universe, something that you can rely upon. Now, for some, it's also possible when it comes to the workplace, if you were, let's say, in, in a dynamic where there were too many people kind of fighting for the same spot or too many people fighting for recognition or rewards or whatever it may be, I almost feel like you're pulling yourself out of that and recognizing your own worth and displaying that forward so that all of that competition is, is just swept away, right? You're the only one who's in the running now. That's what I'm getting. And for some of you, this could also be some kind of new creative opportunity that you can monetize on. All right. It could be a it could be a random hobby that just brought you a little bit of joy here and there. But you're you're suddenly kind of making money off of it, you know, and that is adding to originality. Exactly. Mercury in Aquarius. Now, this is something that could be very eccentric even. It could be something that is completely different from your usual idea of a career or, or even society's idea of a career, right? Because Aquarius, as we know, is the mad scientist. It is somebody who does things very differently. And this is Uranus energy. So I feel like there's something very authentic and very original that is, is kind of emerging from this chaos and this conflict. It's almost like this respite. I almost feel like if you were part of like a rat race, right? You're suddenly like, ah, I can't do this anymore. And then you start doing yoga to calm yourself down and suddenly you're a yoga instructor. You know, you know what I mean? That's what I'm getting here. Um, but there's some kind of authenticity that is emerging from this that is uniquely your own. You know, it's something that is just for you. All right, beautiful. Let's see. Now your third house is ruled by Gemini and this is... Um, the house of communication, wit, humor, intellect, travel, communication, and you're leaving behind something that you thought was a wish. Okay. I don't know. No, I'm confused. So I'm just going to take new ones. Mm -hmm. The high priestess. Very interesting. Aquarius and Pisces energy. You know what I'm getting here, Gemini? Since you rule this particular house and since you are the sign that is ruled by Mercury, you love to communicate, right? Aquarius energy, you have it twice now. The star is usually a card of healing and all of that. I feel like you, the way you, you were communicating with people, you were almost like people were relying on you for wisdom. People were relying on you to make them feel better, right? But I'm almost feeling like because the star card is in the shadow, you see, how should I explain this without showing you the other cards? I'll have to look for them and that's going to take forever. Um, in the light aspect of the star, she's pouring. Now, this is the light, uh, the, the, the water bearer, right? Which rep represents Aquarius. She's pouring all of that knowledge and wisdom and healing into the community, into communal waters. Okay. But in the shadow, She's keeping it to herself. And the high priestess has a lock right here. The high priestess does not talk. The high priestess keeps her or his energy to themselves. So when it comes to communication, I feel like you are not freely um, letting people have access to your energy. You're being very careful about who you are talking to, what exactly is it that you are speaking. Now the high priestess in the shadow um, uh, deck talks about gossip so I'm almost feeling like if there was gossip around you if there were people with the five of wands energy if there were people who were just creating conflict for the sake of speaking you're almost like calling them out on it and you're respecting your own boundaries so that people can respect yours as well you know what I mean companionship yeah wow beautiful uh moon in libra being very careful about who your companions are being very careful about who it is that you converse with and relate to 
people who elevate your frequency and don't deplete it people who fill your cups and don't empty them you know equal partnerships equal give and take otherwise your mum like i said my mercury is in gemini so we love to talk don't we but we don't realize sometimes when we get out of these social dynamics we, we feel exhausted because these people that they're just taking those words out of us they're not putting them back into us right they're one-sided conversations so yeah i like that all right fourth house fourth house is ruled by cancer and this is the house that represents your home environment it represents uh what you make perceive as home it could be another person as well and it does represent um, a mother or a mother figure or your mothering nature and tendency regardless of your gender and it can also talk about what brings you nourishment you're leaving behind the seven of cups leaving behind any kind of confusion where to invest your energy and you are embracing the nine of cups gemini I love it. I love it. There's a there's an unapologetic selfishness here. I I am here for it, man. I am here for it. I love it. Because you know what? With the 7 of cups again, if you remember the original right away, this is the energy of okay, I have 7 cups in front of me. Which one do I pick? Which one do I give my energy to? Right? What is the 9 of cups? The 9 of cups is a big fat happy man sitting with 9 cups behind him with his arms crossed in a gesture of fulfillment for self what are you doing to fulfill yourself gemini are you just doing for other people are you just thinking about oh such and such is going to mind if i take time out for myself such and such is going to mind if i if i stay home that day my friends are going to mind if i if i don't show up for that particular party right the 9 of cups is being unapologetically selfish let's not call it that it's self care what are you doing for yourself gemini oh okay that wanted to show itself protection i can't this is amazing okay listen this is moon in aries all right this card always talks about mothering versus smothering okay and this is inherently for me fourth house energy when it comes to protection sometimes we can invest our time and energy into people to an extent where we start smothering them all right and we think we're doing it out of care we're doing it because well we want to protect them we want to look after them but sometimes those people don't really they're not really grateful for that right they don't really appreciate what it is that you are doing for them and what happens is those people become codependent then because they just take your energy for granted that oh gemini is going to be there you know we don't oh okay gemini will not drink that night gemini can be uh what is that called what is that term uh i forgotten like you know how you pick one particular person when on a night out who doesn't drink who can drive everyone home i don't know what it's called there's a term for it let me know in the comments if you know what i'm talking about So Gemini is going to be the, the the sober person that night, you know. It's fine. But what if you want to drink that night? What if you just want to have a good time? You know what I mean? I feel like you need to stop mothering people, Gemini. You need to let people mother you for a change. That's what I'm getting. Hmm. I'm going to keep sipping coffee, I have a bad throat. <clears throat> All right. Now let's get to the 5th house. The 5th house is ruled by Leo and it is a house that talks about creativity, romance, casual dating, anything that brings you pleasure, okay? Your hobbies. Leaving behind the fool. Interesting. What is it that you are embracing? You're embracing the 8 of wands. That's interesting. the fool in the shadow aspect can be taking a leap um into knowingly choppy waters okay you know something is going to either make you fall sick or something that is toxic for you there are a million red flags and you're just like nah it's fine you know you only live once yolo let's jump you know like let's say there's there's a bad boy or a bad girl right there you know uh, in your dating experience and you're like oh you know that's an adventure that will be fun let me go sit on their motorcycle <laughs> you know what i mean that is the fool in shadow you know it can get you into trouble 
but then you're leaving that behind you're leaving behind that compulsiveness and that restlessness and you're embracing the eight of wands the eight of wands are cupid's arrows they say okay it is focused movement it is direct action it is knowing exactly where you're going and exactly what it is that you need to accomplish what your destination is right these wands are not flung willy-nilly okay they are they are flung with intent and purpose so i feel like the the dating experiences that you are indulging in right now and even your friendships i feel like there's a whole lot of intention behind these and you're being very careful about what may be counted as a risk and what may not be there is self preservation as well as action here all right and i also feel like with the eight of wands there could be a lot of communication coming in uh from maybe an aquarius or an aries for some of you um but this is communication that is coming in that is going to make you really happy and it's going to make you feel very secure and it's also going to make you feel like a child again in the most beautiful way possible egotism i need one more this is mars in leo flirtation perfect card for this house i would be aware of somebody who wants to inflate themselves to make them see themselves themselves appear bigger than they are grander than they are more colorful than they are you know what i mean uh this eight of wands energy like i said is communication and i feel like i did talk about it making you feel like a child again i would make sure that it just makes you feel like a child and not behave like a child because some people are very reckless okay they come into our energy fields and they say oh you know let's go bungee jumping there's nothing wrong with bungee jumping right but it is dangerous so if you don't take the proper precautions that are necessary and you, and you haven't trained yourself to do that jump it can cause a whole lot of havoc right so just make sure that whoever it is that you are speaking to and dealing with they don't influence you in a bad way all right let it let it remain a happy flirtation but at the same time i wouldn't let somebody's restlessness affect your energy right and again be aware of anybody who is operating from ego somebody like i said with flirtation may express themselves to be grander their lives to be grander than they actually are so i would do your homework all right now sixth house sixth house is ruled by virgo and it is the house that represents your health your day to day routine and my candle just went out right so this represents your day to day routine and it represents uh something that you do over and over again in order to almost make your life better okay it could be like drinking 3 liters of water a day or 4 liters of water a day or just kind of um developing an exercise routine or some kind of diet whatever it may be let's see i haven't placed that tea light properly it's going to keep bothering me but i don't want to waste any time all right we have the chariot some of you may be stopping like a running routine or something like that it is possible it's not for all of you and embracing the queen of swords hmm gemini for some of you for a very very small number of you I feel like you may have been ignoring an illness, a chronic illness that needed um immediate attention. Some of you may have required surgery for it, but it wasn't urgent enough and and you put it on the back burner. I I I see you embracing that now and going in for the procedure. Okay? This could even be a, a cosmetic procedure. You know what I mean? but for the others i'm getting with the chariot <clears throat> there's something about movement you may have been running let's say and you may have been running wrong okay Th that's a thing trust me i've done it you've been running a certain way and like one of your feet it, it, it doesn't doesn't land the way it should right until you get physiotherapy for it you'll keep running wrong and once you keep running wrong you may have a permanent injury right so with the queen of swords i'm getting discipline I'm getting you do some you doing something exactly the way it should have been done in the first place. You know what I mean? And this could be for anything. It doesn't have to just be for running. Could be anything related to your health. 
that you may have been uh, approaching in the wrong way. And now you're cutting something out that could have been really, really bad for your health. Seduction, strange. Some of these cards really throw me off sometimes. This is Jupiter and Pisces. And practicality, moon in Capricorn. Not letting yourself be seduced by things that seem good on the surface, okay? Now, again, who did I give this analogy to? I gave it to Aries, I think. Diet Coke, right? And you're like, oh, okay, no calories, no sugar. This is good for me. This is just carbonated water. It is not. It is full of the worst chemicals, right? So advertisements may have seduced you to believe. It doesn't have to be Diet Coke. It could be anything. It could be any artificial sweetener. It could be... Uh, some kind of low-fat butter or whatever, right? It is full of chemicals. You were seduced to use it. And you're suddenly realizing that over time it started affecting your health. And then you're focusing more on something that is organic. Organic, right? For some of you, I'm also getting that you may be, may be going down the path of veganism or you may be uh, going into whole foods and just, just consuming organic produce. It is possible. And not being seduced into... I'm also getting... I'm, I don't know why I'm spending so much time on this house. This reading is going to be so long. Mm. I'm getting... In order to... Again, don't scream at me. In order to appear more seductive, okay? In order to appear more attractive, you may be really pushing yourselves to exercise more, to work out, to starve yourselves or whatever. And it's backfiring. It's backfiring. And with the Queen of Swords, you need to start being more practical about your life and how you are approaching your health. Plain and simple. All right, Gemini, spent way too much time on that. Seventh house, getting to the good stuff. Seventh house is the house of marriage, business partnerships, uh, romantic partnerships, longevity, long-term commitment okay it's ruled by libra and you are leaving behind the king of pentacles some of you may literally be leaving behind an earth sign taurus Virgo, capricorn but for some of you i feel like you're leaving behind stagnancy because the king of uh, pentacles doesn't like change it is someone who is very set in their ways and you're approaching the two of cups <sighs> beautiful I absolutely love it. You remember, I think somewhere here, these cards popped out. The Two of Cups did pop out, but I put it back and it did want to show itself. So it's here. And this is one of the best cards to get in um, the seventh house energy because the Two of Cups is two frequencies intermingling and completing each other. Not that we are incomplete, but sometimes it's always nice to invite another energy into our auric field that complements us and brings out the best in us. You are leaving something that was, like I said, very unchanging behind and embracing somebody who is more flexible. Maybe this is the same partner changing their own energy, right? Somebody who was very stuck in their ways and very stubborn and just focused on finances and not enough time for love, not enough time for dating. But suddenly their frequency is shifting and they are focusing more on, well, investing in you beautiful okay they wanted to pop out i'm trying to avoid uh, flippers in these readings we have excitement mercury in gemini and we have power moon in scorpio so you could be dealing with one of these signs it is possible i mean you're right here with excitement with the gemini card i feel like with power sometimes i get a bad energy from the power card but i'm not getting a bad energy here for me, power right here is about stability and groundedness. So even though you are leaving that king of pentacles energy behind, you are not leaving behind the security that comes with this king of pentacles, right? You are embracing playfulness in your relationships. You are embracing joy and freedom and just a whole lot of happy dancing. But at the same time, there is groundedness. There's a sense of permanency here. You know what I mean? I like that. This is really balanced. All right, let's see. Um, what are we getting to? Eighth house. Eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. And this is the house of power. <laughs> it is the house of the occult. It's about things that we don't speak about in polite society. So it could talk about intimacy, death, taxes, and debt. 
leaving behind the six of cups leaving behind toxic memories is what i'm getting something that may have upset your psyche in the past some memories that may have turned very sour very quickly and embracing the ace of pentacles beautiful for some of you i am also getting for a very small number of you there may have been investment opportunities that may have looked really enticing in the past and then you suddenly realize that you would have lost all your money uh, so you didn't invest in them and because you saved out on those resources um, there is another opportunity for you to invest with the ace of pentacles but for some of you with the six of cups this could have been a soulmate it could have been a karmic partner it could have been someone in your life who was there to teach you a lesson and i almost feel like you learned that lesson it was a difficult lesson but you learned it and because you've learned it you are not being asked to repeat cycles you are being given a brand new opportunity to start something brand new here with the ace of pentacles influence mercury in libra i need one more here concentration focus you may be tempted you may be tempted if you've left something behind something that was intimate for you all right you could have had a very intimate relationship with somebody i don't want them to influence you back into whatever this is uh by words of flattery because that's what the concentration card does it it tries to well um it tries to keep you off your your intended path all right uh so i feel gemini someone may come in here with a little bit of temptation to take you off your course and you need to be very careful all right that's for some of you okay Let's get you your ninth house energy ruled by Sagittarius. Talks about philosophy, travel, spirituality, religion, and beliefs. Leaving behind the Ace of Cups. Interesting. Embracing the King of Pentacles. You remember right here. We're leaving. one king of pentacles behind and here we're embracing a slightly more flexible king of pentacles the ace of pentacles can very easily turn from a beautiful cup of love to a toxic cup of poison so whatever had turned into toxicity for you right here i feel like has bleeded into your philosophy of life how you look at love how you perceive love as a whole right you're leaving the idea of that kind of unchanging love behind and you are moving forward towards somebody or something that brings you stability that works hand in hand with you charity someone who does the work with you saturn in cancer i feel like for some of you this could have been unrequited love or it could just be a very unbalanced relationship that you dealt with now this is 9th house energy it is not the energy of well the 7th house but i see it bleeding in here and you have the ace of cups for crying out loud so i feel like if somebody was not putting in the effort was not putting in the work and you almost developed this ideology that well i need to be this mule in relationships i need to do all the work in relationships mm mm I feel that philosophy changing because there is someone coming in to give you a helping hand and literally hold your hand through life that's what I'm getting Definition of love is changing All right 10th house house of career your public image your income ruled by capricorn leaving behind the five of swords leaving behind petty gossip leaving behind shortcuts to success leaving behind people who don't have your best interest at heart leaving behind people who take credit when it was due to you and embracing the nine of wands standing up for yourself i feel like you may have let a lot of things slide when it comes to work gemini you may have just you know oh you know whatever they're immature let them take the credit i've done all the hard work let them take the credit no more i feel like with the nine of wands you are realizing that 
sometimes when you have done the work you're the only one who deserves the credit and you are standing strong you are standing up for yourself for some of you i am also getting with the five of swords where you may have felt that something that you can invest in may get you success quickly but very soon realizing that it requires a lot more work than you had anticipated so with the nine of wands i don't see you backing down i see you putting in the work i see you standing strong and not giving up loss some of you may have lost out on a job okay you may have lost out on a job opportunity but i almost feel like that this loss gave you that drive and that ambition and that fire to try even harder because the nine of wands is the wounded warrior so naturally you have been a wound was inflicted on you right a wound was inflicted you dealt with that loss and now it is time for you to fight for yourself and move forward resistance i'm going to need one more here because you're being very stubborn restlessness hoof gemini you know what i'm getting i'm getting a storm in a teacup that's what i'm getting i feel like your energy needs to be directed in a better way you are feeling restless you are feeling aggressive but i almost feel like in this resistance and this aggression you are being very closed off to new experiences you're being very closed off to new ideas and new concepts of well life right now capricorn who rules this house is ruled by saturn which is a restrictive energy it is someone who puts you in a box i'm almost getting that okay let's say you were part of a 9 to 5 right there's nothing wrong with 9 to 5s but it is something that is acceptable by society right and you may have lost out on that and you're suddenly like oh no what are people going to think i need to apply for another 9 to 5 that i am not going to be happy in no originality start something brand new for yourself be authentic don't be afraid it's a brand new year right you create your own reality you can do whatever it is that you want to do you with this restlessness card use this energy wisely gemini this is mercury in aries and again you have mercury in taurus right here you did have the eight of wands you remember what i said about directing your focus in the correct way the nine of wands can also be a poor me energy it can be an an energy of look at how much loss i have incurred oh poor me oh poor me no We are not throwing pity parties for ourselves, Gemini. We are using this energy and we are creating brand new things for ourselves. It's not going to resonate for everybody. All right, eleventh house. Eleventh house is your community, your neighbors, your friend circles. Ooh, some of you may be like breaking a friendship with a Scorpio. It's possible. Doesn't have to be. Three of Swords. Wow. that is deep you remember we had the lost card here and this is bleeding on here some of you may have made a friend at work it is possible and that friendship may be coming to an end but i'm almost feeling like you're not upset about it you are embracing the loss you're embracing the pain that comes with it for some of you it is also possible that you may have experienced a loss of a partnership okay like there was a potential for a friendship to turn into more and it didn't transform the way you wanted it to but again i'm all it's almost like you're like it's okay it's fine i can deal it's not as painful as you thought it would be you know what i mean this is very strange i'm going to get one more card here the queen of cups right you know what i'm getting i'm almost feeling like if this nourishment isn't coming from an external source whether you're talking about friends or anything else you're like i have i'm the embodiment of love i have all that love within me just because it's not coming from somebody else doesn't mean it, the the whole concept of love has vanished from my life you know so i feel like whatever this loss is whatever this transformation is in in a close partnership or a relationship or a friendship it's bringing out the concept of self love you're not depending on other people to nourish you defense and romance wow you're being very guarded now you're being very guarded when it comes to opening up your heart gemini i don't blame you with the death card and the three of swords that's difficult energy to deal with i just feel like don't you know cuz sometimes when we build walls around ourselves it can keep bad energies out but it can also prevent good energies from coming in 
you know don't let one loss make you generalize everybody else's energy if some one person didn't come in correctly it doesn't mean everyone will come in with the same frequency you know so let let love in whatever kind of love this is let it in and see what you want to make of it once it establishes itself in your life because that's how you learn right all right 12th house ruled by pisces talks about your spirituality about the dream world about well sometimes your cult and your subconscious mind things that are hidden and we have the lovers wow some of you may uh have pisces heavily in your chart or i don't know why i'm getting that or gemini of course but i'm getting pisces from the from from the lovers card why am i getting pisces energy it's a gemini card Okay, I'll take them. Three of Cups and the Hanged Man. Wow, this is complicated energy. You know what I'm getting? I'm getting intuitively that you were part of situations that almost made you want to keep escaping. That almost made you feel like no there, there, there's a better place for me to be there's a better uh, atmosphere for me to be in it's almost like you go to a party over and over again and every time you get there you're like oh I'd rather be at home you know what I mean it's like you weren't feeling comfortable in in your own skin in your in your environment with a little bit of shift in perspective perspective with a little bit of introspection Gemini, I feel like there is a soul tribe around you that speaks the same language as you. People who you don't have to want to escape from. Does that make sense? Fulfillment, exactly. You need to look um, kind of, I'm almost getting like a lot of your social groups, your friendships may have been disappointing. But don't isolate yourself. Don't build those walls. Okay, you need to start embracing the new bonds that are coming into your life because I feel like they're coming with a whole lot of satisfactory energy. The three of cups and the hanged man. You remember I said, why am I getting Pisces energy from, from, from the lovers? Firstly, because the 12th house is ruled by Pisces and the hanged man is Pisces energy. So you may very well be inviting a Pisces into your life. But otherwise, I do feel like uh, this is very mutable energy. This is somebody... Or a group of people who you don't have to change for. People who truly speak the same language as you. People who help you feel comfortable in your own spirit, in your own soul. I would look forward to that. It could even be like a meditation group or a yoga group or, you know, something like that. Could even just be a community on Reddit or an online community that you are a part of, that you make friends in. Who fulfill you all right building blocks what did I say I said something about building blocks I'm I'm almost certain I did but again building blocks this is a card of your community it is a card of the people who make up your life right the energies that create your life if you start building a house with bricks of sand it's going to collapse it may hold its shape for a while but it will collapse Every brick that is a part of your life needs to be rock solid. So your friendships, your relationship, your colleagues, co-workers, people in your book club, I don't care. Make sure every single person that you are interacting with is solid in your life. Only then will you be able to create that palace of your dreams. You know what I mean? All right, Gemini, that was it. Very long reading. I hope this helped you guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.